Hello, this is Johnny Henson, Professor Poole with Bill University out of Goodyear, Arizona. Today I'm going to take you through how to do rail first caroms. Now what's really important when you're doing a rail first carom is factor that the, the, the uh, width of the object ball or the cue ball that you're going to use uh, in the carom is going to pass by the ball without touching it because if you uh, if there's not that much space then the carom almost becomes impossible so what you want to do is picture that the space of your cue ball or your object ball is it don't exist in other words and then anything above the width of that ball is the space that you're making up off the rail so let's say the ball is further off the rail then uh, then you're gonna have to hit a little further back on your bank so that you know your ball will have a chance to come 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 to the bank, come out, and then carry them off that ball. So that's why you want to change different distances for the object ball that you're playing off of uh, away from the rail, because then that that changes uh, you know how how uh, how you have to bank that ball off the rail in order to make it. So as you practice this, you'll realize that. When, when you've got about an eighth or a quarter of an inch between uh, the cue ball uh, and the ball uh, on the rail, off the rail, that th those caroms are very easy, almost automatic. But then the further you get away, you know, the, let's say you put the cue ball on the rail and then you, um, um, and then you're, you're getting a half an inch or three quarter of an inch or, or an inch and a half, two inches away from that space. Well, then now that that becomes a lot more difficult. So, uh, but but when you're when you're first looking at a carom in a game situation, if you do not have a ball's width between the ball you're playing off of and the rail, I wouldn't attempt it because I don't think you'll be able to make it. Uh, I think it'll it'll double kiss or it'll it'll trap it'll it'll do something you don't want it to do. Okay. Um, uh, one thing uh, uh, I also recommend is is setting up actual game situations, you know, like uh, maybe a nine ball or eight ball, where you're actually, you know, uh, kind of mim mimicking game situations when you're practicing this. And I think it helps you recognize these shots in actual games. Uh, if you'll notice, uh, I'm demonstrating uh, how, while the way I always play uh, using my scientific stroke that I teach in my level two course. Um, I don't have warm-up strokes. Um, I basically just uh, do all of my aiming, and then I, when I'm done aiming, I just take my cue stick straight back to a distinct pause, and then I just follow straight through. Uh, it's a very, very uh, great stroke. It's a very, very easy stroke to master, and it's very, very, very accurate. And so, uh, you know, I think you'll notice uh, that uh, on all these shots, you'll see that I, I don't use warm-up strokes, and I also don't um, uh, have a fast backstroke and then a fast follow-through. I have a distinct pause in my backstroke. So anyway, uh, getting back to the task at hand, um, uh, 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 I'm setting up some scenarios, you know, like 13's tied up with 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a rail, rail first and then, you know, break those out. So once you start setting up different game scenarios, you're going to realize that you're going to run into these a whole lot more than you think. Because right now you're not looking for them because you haven't mastered them. Once you master them, then they'll just, oh, okay, I see that, I see this, you know. Um, and and so, uh, another advanced uh, technique, too, is to overhit the, the object ball. And, um, and then that way uh, it won't move that first uh, that object ball as much. So if you over hit it or under hit it uh, a little bit it'll tend to hold it there and so it's a kind of an advanced technique that you know that you know I'm just mentioning that because uh, uh, when I teach students in school there's a, a lot of there's you know the basic technique and then there's there's different advanced techniques that I you know take students through and that's kind of a little bit of an advanced technique but anyway um, I practice these uh, practice different spots, putting your cue ball in different spots, uh, uh, putting your object ball in different spots, putting the ball you're playing off of in different spots, and uh, and then different distances away from the rail. Just mix it up, just keep mixing it up. Try not to shoot any two shots uh, exactly the same unless you miss that shot and then you wanna reset it up. 
Uh, then go down to the other end of the table and, and hit some long shots, you know. If you notice that when you have, let's say, a fairly uh, dead-on combo, uh, then, uh, then that pocket becomes a huge pocket. And so uh, some of these scenarios that I'm lining up right now are easy, easy shots in actual game situations because you got such a huge pocket down there. And so by setting up uh, actual game uh, scenarios, uh, it's just going to help you uh, see them, you know, see those shots when you're actually playing. So anyway, I really, really, really want to uh, uh, encourage you to practice these, master these, um, get used to these, get comfortable with these. And I, uh, I promise you that when you start playing your leagues or tournaments and you start utilizing these types of shots, uh, your opponent ain't going to see this coming. You know, so uh, um, as you master these, your, your opponent's going to say, oh, hey, I've got him all tied up. There's no way this guy's going to win the game. And you just go up there and take your stick straight back, straight forward, and it's money. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching. And please like and subscribe me and keep me motivated. You have a nice day.